Now, the main thing we're looking at this week is internal assessment. And there's a lot of reading to do around this. Um, there's a lot of documentation, uh, lots of examples. That's a good thing uh, for you to have a look at and to start getting your head around what you are going to prepare in terms of assessing your students. So we've talked about the T-Labs and teaching, learning and assessment plans, and that sets out the framework um, of what you're going to teach, how you're going to teach it, how you're going to assess. But now we're looking more specifically at the assessment elements. So for units one and two, it's you come up with the assessment tasks and everything else in relation to that. And I've given you a, a number of examples here of different types of assessment um, instruments. Um, you've got projects and extended response tasks and exams. They're the three main assessment instruments that you've got options of in digital solutions. So a project generally goes over a number of weeks and it goes through the design cycle as you've been very familiar with in digital technologies. So students will work through doing that. Now it can also be an abridged part of a project such as just doing the, um, the problem definition stage, sort of setting out what is intended for the project. And we'll talk about that when we look at the EAs in a little bit. But projects are one. Extended response is another type of assessment, which might be like an essay or um, a series of activities that students do. It might be a whole series of um, programming activities or SQL database query activities framed as an extended response. And then you've got the traditional examination where students are asked a series of questions but it can be also an applied examination where students are doing things on a computer. Now that's more difficult in the external assessment, um, sorry, in the uh, year 12 assessment. Of course, remember, you've got to also think about authenticity and all of those aspects, but it's not impossible. Now, they won't be doing that though in the external assessment. Um, that's done on a paper-based exam. So it's not really necessarily giving them good practice for that. Although in theory, you could do an internal assessment as an exam in year 12, although I haven't really seen anyone do that. Um, but it's certainly, it's, it's a possible, possibility. <laughs> okay, so have a look at the different types of assessment instruments, the types of assessment that you can use with your students, and we'll discuss those in the tutorial in a bit more detail. So that's year 11. Now year 12, we have the three internal or the three units that make up the internal assessment. And each of those has an IA, internal assessment item. IA1 is the first one. And this is a summative internal assessment investigation technical proposal. So essentially doing a, a um, defining the problem and setting out some specifications for a solution. So we call that a technical proposal in digital solutions and it's worth 20% of their overall marks and the students will go through and do a series of um, aspects where they meet that requirement. Now there are some very specific things associated with this though in terms of the format of how they are going to present their technical proposal. Um, First thing is it's what's called a multi multimodal presentation. So this means it has to be in at least two modes. So it can't just be text. It could be text and video. It could be um, screen recordings and text. Uh, that can be a range of different combinations of media that have to be used, but it can't just be a single form of media. Uh, and um, so some examples would be a web page, which students do up a, a mock uh, web design. Um, it could be a slideshow or an animation document that demonstrates how certain things are going to occur. It could be a multimedia movie. Um, it could be a webinar or a podcast. There can be a whole range of different ways that students can present their technical proposal. 
they're designed for a solution for a problem. Now you will generally give them the problem. Now ideally it this was intended that the students would be able to define the problem, but because this needs to be submitted the year before, obviously students can't have had very much input into uh, what problems they would like to solve before they actually enrolled in the subject. And because it needs to be specified in a fair amount of detail, um, it's difficult to get a generic um, option through the assessors whereby students can make choices. It is possible to incorporate some of that, but it is difficult. A lot of uh, um, IA ones are knocked back because they aren't specific enough in terms of what students will be doing and the resources they'll have available and all the rest. And just saying the students will define that is generally not acceptable. Uh, so not exactly what was originally planned, but uh, because of the requirements of the assessment processes, um, it is what it is. So again, we'll talk more about IA1s and the uh, requirements of a technical proposal when we look at the examples. Now you can go and look at some of the examples in the subject reports. And again, we're going to look at some examples when we go into more detail in the assessment, um, when we look at assessment in that week. So then you have IA2. Well, actually I have given you a couple of examples, or an example in, here, in this one, um, with the multimodal presentation that the students have. Um, and so you can have a look at those. Now in IA2, they are actually doing the project. Not necessarily the project that was described in IA1. <laughs> so generally you will provide them with the technical proposal essentially um, for them to do the project. And then the students will complete the project. You will provide them with specific resources, specific context and all the rest so that students will then go and develop that into a project. And again, there are some specific requirements. It will be up to 10 A4, A, sorry, A3 pages, so large format pages. Um, a two to four minute demonstration of the functionality of the user interface, data and coded components of the solution by a video recording. So again, very specific in terms of what students have to be able to do. And then four to six pages of code with annotations to the code. So essentially you've got 10 A3 pages describing the technical documentation, a video walk walkthrough, and um, the code that is associated with the application that they've developed. Now it's not quite as easy as that. There are some more specifics that need to be included such as a data flow diagram and uh, pseudocode and things of that nature. And again, we'll discuss those in more detail a bit later. But have a look at the example I've provided you. Um, it sets out the instrument specific marking guide. So you can see what would be used for marking the actual student response. It sets out the task itself in terms of describing the task, what you will provide your students with the task description. And then there is a video walkthrough and an annotated sample response um, that students would have submitted to that. So again, have a look at that. We'll discuss that and um, explore that in the tutorial. Then you've got um, term four, uh, so unit four, the last semester of year 12. Now here they do uh, the unit four assessment uh, the final IA3, internal assessment number three, which is again a project, but it's a project folio. Um, so in this case, it's generally a collection of activities that students have, have done, particularly around data exchange and SQL queries, things of that nature. Uh, some of the specifics that students will do in this task, uh, again, it'll be 10 A3 pages um, and four pages of coded with annotations 
and a one to two minute demonstration of the functionality of the data exchange solution by video recording. So again, we'll talk this through in terms of what the specifics are as we go into more detail in the content, but have a look at it. Have a look at the example. Um, look at the instrument specific marking guide and the task description and the annotated video and the transcript. So that'll give you an idea of what's required for that task and for the three IA tasks. Now, by looking at the IAs, that'll give you a good idea of what is required for year 12. So when you then come to develop your assessment for year 11, for units one and two, you base them on your understanding of what is going to be assessed in year 12. Okay, you are preparing them for that year 12 assessment. So year 11 really is a preparation year, a practice year for year 12.